Opa! Opa! Welcome everybody to Stavi's World. 904-800, Stav, call in, we'll solve your problems. We're back in the studio, happy to have my boy Mark Norman in the mix. Hey, hey. Mark, welcome back, second time on the program. Good to be back, I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, before, we'll get into, we've, we were just on the Fully Loaded tour, we were having philosophical discussions about certain words that you can and can't say on stage, not the one you're thinking of. Mm. Uh, there's a lot to cover, but before, why don't you tell the people, we're trying to get this out as soon as possible, special out right now on You got that right, soup to nuts. Soup to nuts, baby. I don't know if we're supposed to say the N-word, <laughs> because uh, the, the writer strike. <laughs> I'm serious, so, you, so just say special. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right, technically you're not supposed to promote something so i can say special because they're they're the devil right now oh i see see. oh special streaming special on a big streaming platform streaming with an n with an (laughs) big red n nice hard n yeah (laughs) the the worst n you could say right now exactly Exactly. wow they came out of the blue oh yeah you know to be of the most offensive end to writers uh but yes (laughs) tell that to kramer go (laughs) go find it figure out where the fuck it is god damn it Eldest, this fucking thing is fucked. boy i feel i hear that pleather really creaking over there i feel <laughs> it's bad not for me, it. motherfucker <laughs> it's the it's the it's the mic let me get in here you fucking prick ab come on man we had the time off we couldn't we couldn't fix the mic arm this is nice. Everyone, everyone, look at Eldis's taint. Yeah. Oh, we're still on. Yeah. Oh, we're on. Oh, all dude. right. No. A, we use every part of the buffalo here. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Those thighs are wild, Eldis. Eld- Jesus, <laughs> how do you, your balls must be ruined? Yeah, it's he's getting smushed. The man chafes hold big on. time. Oh yeah. Uh oh. All right. Hold on, hold on. Elvis unplugged me in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> Just so you guys know. <laughs> yeah. How about that Jonah Hill, huh? I'm <laughs> trying to fill time. <laughs> Woo! Uh, you might have to hold. Oh, wait, you got it. You got, oh, got it. it. Nicely done. We Boy, might that. cut a little bit of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't need every part of it. Uh, all right. I won't fuck with it too much. Anyway, so our friend Mark here. Pretty nice th- shape on, on Eldest, though, right? Great, Bob. He's got, he's got, he's definitely, got, we've talked about, no, don't give yourself the applause. Uh, beautiful head of hair as <laughs> he well. He does have a great, I will ha- unfortunately have to give him that. Thank you, thank but you. But he, he is, uh, he does have, we've discussed it, it's a shame he can't, like, be a woman. Like, or mm. he can't, he can't give birth. He's voluptuous. He has that, but it's not, I, you know, I'm a round, I'm a rotund man, but I don't have a birthing body. Yes. His hips are out of control. So true. Oh, this has Parts an hour. just to... sag like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? I mean, it got this muffin top here. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> but, you know, hey, I'll, I'll never, I'll never swim with a shirt on or anything like that. No, of oh, course not. You believe in yourself. Yeah. I want to see it. No, he said on. He'll swim with it off. Oh, good. He shows. Oh, yeah, good. yeah. He'll show the titties off. Hell yeah. We're body positive around here. Me and Eldis are pretty. Me, me and Eldis are pretty inexplicably okay with ourselves and have been for the last ten years as good. we fluctuated through. That's all that matters. Different levels about, of fatness. It's all perception. It's all about how you feel. Yeah. You've never. Have you ever dealt with a chafed thigh before, Mark? Oh, I was a fat kid. Right. So and you remember? I skateboarded in the right. Louisiana heat. Uh. So this was a swampy <laughs> Katrina what? Wuhan wet market <laughs> down here. It what? was bad. Did you have any? Uh, did you have any like remedies for it? How did you fix it? I found. Well, I got a. I was a. I hooked up with a soccer player okay. in college, and she what gave was me, his name? Hey, <laughs> uh, Messi. No. <laughs> Uh, That'd be awesome if just five three Messi is just giving it to you from the back. <laughs> he's got you. He's got you bent over. He's on some phone books. Uh, <laughs> the greatest of all time is just smashing your hole in college. Anyway, so this girl is, fuck, hey, is fucking he, you. He gave great header. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so I'm fucking this girl, and, and she was a really hot lady, but she yeah. was a soccer player, and she was like kind of a hippie, uh, and so there wasn't a ton of uh, washing interesting. going on. And I, she gave me. A yeast infection. Uh, which, Eldest knows all about it. 
Okay, we call it yeah. jock itch. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I always call it. Yeah, that's the man You got to control the narrative. Let's, yeah. well, both of you are out of your minds. You both had yeast infections. It's total yeast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know. This is pre-internet, so I'd have sure. to go. I asked a doctor I knew. and he pre-internet? Was, you didn't go to college in fucking 1982. Oh, yeah, I go, well, that's true. 2003? What is this? 2000? 2000? <laughs> it's about, yeah, 2000. 2000, 2000, 2000 okay. 2001. Okay, okay. So I guess okay. we had internet, but it was. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, that whole yeah, thing. Yeah. And uh, so you weren't really just WebMD and all sure, day. Sure, sure, sure. So I asked the doctor, and he said, oh, you got to put uh, cultures on it. You need to kill the yeast. So I went out and bought yogurt. <laughs> no, you dipped your nuts and in I yogurt? I dipped my nuts in a big <laughs> Costco pink yogurt thing, which didn't work at all. <laughs> I tried. Um, what if that's a, you went to the Bayou doctor? Oh, you got to take your nuts out. <laughs> Put them in some. Yo, play, boy. You got to get go Yeah. Squirt some go on your nuts, boy. Fruit on the bottom, balls on top. <laughs> but, yeah, I was shellacking that shit on. Nothing worked. I was such an idiot. You know, you're like yeah, a dumb 20-year-old. Of, of course. And then I uh, eventually found Tough Act and Tenactin. Tenactin. And literally, you spray it on, and it bubbles. It's, yeah, it's searing yeah. it off. Like a it witch cursed like to you. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that worked. Wow, interesting. Yeah, but it is bad down there. You, you know. <laughs> I know. It's pretty bad. Tenact, isn't that for feet? It's a fungus. Wow. Well, okay, so it worked because okay. it's all fungi. Athlete's foot. Yeah, it's the You're same shit. You're dickhead athletes. This, this, <laughs> you, you fuck a hippie soccer player. Who's got a pussy so musty? Yes. He gives your dick athlete's foot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's fucking wild, dude. Eldest, you, yeah, you had it. Uh, I've had it several times throughout my twenties. <laughs> Interestingly, I haven't really had it recently. I wonder if my body's just like used yeah, to dude. it or knows what to do or something. But mm, I had a one you're time. You're evolving. Had a one time. Yeah. I went to like the Planned Parenthood around like Soho or whatever. And I was like really worried. She was like, "You thought you had herpes?" Yeah, I, th- I was like, "What the oh, fuck is yeah. on my dick?" And she Same. was like, "Relax, it's not an STD. You're good." And then, great greatest news on the planet, yeah. by the way. Yeah, but then, but then she just kind of like breezed over the fungus, and then she was like, "But listen, your blood pressure is pretty <laughs> high, and you're pretty, and you're pretty fat." <laughs> She said, I'm overweight and high blood pressure, not healthy. Also, this chart says you're a big gay. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, dude. So fuck her. Uh, Did you get it from a musty lady, Eldis? I don't know if it was from a lady. I think it was just like I was wearing some tight fucking jeans for how fat I was. And yeah. it was hot as fuck in the city. I think oh, that's yeah. really what it all comes down to. And I'm uncut, so that yeah. doesn't help. Oh, yeah. no. Wait, you got it on the penis? Or just it's, around it's, it. When I've gotten it, it's been like little dots. And this on my is educational, di- <laughs> folks. It'll, It'll been, spread. Okay. Oh god. It'll yeah. spread up to the shaft a little uh, bit because it's basically a rash. I had I it see. like under my foreskin, little under. dots on the, co- oh, on the cockhead, like on the no. actual cockhead. It was no. fucked up. Oh. That sucks, dude. It was. You do have a you have a loose sock too. Yeah. You really? got. He's got a lot. My man's working with a lot of foreskin. Wigwam. Oh, yeah. He could he could get that taken in no problem. Oh, I always dude. I always have like a dirty sock hanging <laughs> off your foot after a long day. <laughs> yeah. You should get a foreskin tuck. Yeah. <laughs> You should get a foreskin, foreskinoplasty. I can't, man. I'm too true. No, I know, dude. Yeah, me I'm neither. You know me. You know me, man. We, yeah, we're on the different spectrums of uncircumcised. My shit's too tight. <laughs> Eldis is too loose. But we'll, bo- we'll both, we'll go to our graves with a foreskin. What the establishment fears most. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Both sides of the political spectrum. <laughs> Loose foreskin, <laughs> tight foreskin, you finally can, together. <laughs> you've got international secrets in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Eldis unfurls his foreskin. Uh, it has a plan to assassinate the president of the United States. They're like, how are they getting coke in the White House? <laughs> they keep getting it in. Oh, <laughs> uh, fuck. Yeah, that's the next Mission Impossible. Part yeah. two. Tom Cruise has to fight a syndicate of uncircumcised terrorists, <laughs> and he loses. <laughs> How great would that be if, like, at the end of that franchise, Tom Cruise just takes a fat L? He loses. Oh, yeah. That would be all. I always wanted, like, a big movie to end with, like, they just completely, the hero gets his shit kicked in. It's got to happen. What are we on, like, 12 of those? It's crazy. This one is, what, seven or eight? And it's part one. 
Damn. I can't wait to see it. I mean, I love those movies, and I think Tom Cruise, you know, really reinvented himself in a cool way. Sure. And had and kept out of superhero yeah. movies while also getting to have his own big blockbuster action franchise. Right. It's just crazy to think about those movies. It's like the first one was directed by fucking um, De Palma. Brian Is that De Palma. Right? And, and that one's killer. That one's great. I love that. I mean, I like I like all of them. Even the ones people say two and three aren't as good. Yeah. I like those too. Oh yeah. Uh, and then and then they kind of just became these huge action movies, but mm. just a little more I mean, not belief they're none of them believable, but just <laughs> I felt like a little more I kind of gravitate I'll probably get crucified for this take. I gravitate to those more than the Fast and the Furious movies. Same. Even though I like those, those are fun, but they just There's a little more cringe something. on those. Something about them just never... Maybe I'm not a car guy. Maybe that's right, what it is. Right, right. Because I do think there's... I, I really take for granted how many people love cars in America. Yeah, I like them. I just can't... I mean, they're cool, but I just... I don't know what it is, man. I never... Like, if uh, if I have all the money in the world, I'd probably get, like, a really nice, like, electric SUV. Yeah, you know what I mean? That, like, but the, that's my... The Greeks never went the car route. There's no Greek car, is there? Not really. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, and in Greece, every, all the roads are so fucking tiny. Like, in Greece, people are literally driving, like, you know, four-cylinder. Yeah, yeah, like Like, little-ass Fiat Peugeots, right. all, all that kind of shit. That, very is, that is a very American thing. What is your, what's your favorite, what kind of car do you really want? I mean, I got a, I got a 2002 Beamer, 1973. Yeah. It's a, That's awesome. just a cute little yeah, go-kart. Yeah, i that. It's, it's cute. It's fun. It's like my dream car, and I finally yeah. bought one during the pandemic, and uh, ironically, I'm too scared to drive it. <laughs> yeah. It's so pretty, and it's in great shape, and I just keep it in the garage. And, and New York is brutal, too, brutal. For, for cars. Yeah, brutal. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm doing a gig on Long Island. I'm borrowing Salacuse's car. <laughs> Uh, and I took, I borrowed his car. I have a car. What the fuck does Salakus drive? Oh, you gotta see this Dude. hunk of junk in the driveway. He's like, you can borrow, but it needs an oil change. I was like, oh, no, fuck. So I just, I just came to the Jiffy Lube. I found one right by your house. I went to the Jiffy Lube watching cops in the waiting room drinking bad coffee. You have a car, and you yes. borrowed your much less successful friend's car. <laughs> you didn't rent the car, by the way. That's be- that's another yeah, Norman special. True, true. God Could've forbid you spend a hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to make probably twenty grand <laughs> on Long Island. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you got me there. Got me. I spent sixty on the Jiffy Lube. <laughs> okay, yeah, no. yeah. You, it is. It is. You know what? This one cancels out because you did kind of do him a favor too. And I'm gonna fill it up on the yeah, way back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Put- In fact, it would have been cheaper to rent the car. I know. You're probably right. I'm probably for eighty or something. It's like a three hour drive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, what are you gonna do? You, you're, you're right. You you're live right. and learn. But you got a great. I saw the whole neighborhood. I walked around. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a great neighborhood. I love it here, man. That's why I was like, you need anything? That was code for like, can I come early? Oh my <laughs> bad. No, no. I you just, you could have come early. We eldest actually got here on time. I was shocked, even a little early. Well, I almost tried on. to buy Peruvian <laughs> chicken for you, but oh, I couldn't find it. Dude, I'll tell you where it is. Oh yeah, uh, last time we had we had a great place. Won't say the name because. It's not no free promo. It's just I don't want people. I've already been spotted there a couple times. Oh yeah. There's nothing worse when you're just stoned. Oh, <laughs> all, the worst. The all worst. you want. I've had a tough like week. All I want is to be like I'm giving into all my addictions today. Yes. And I'm gonna get fucked up, and I'm going to eat, you know, a hat, a half a chicken. And fucking three ribs yes. fr- with some fried rice on the side. Yeah. And then some guy's like, Ooh. uh, starve? Right. And I'm just gone out of my mind and I'm just like shaking. I want this chicken so bad. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I have to pretend like I'm a sim- I'm like stripped to my core as an animal. Right. Where all I want is to like just fucking devour this chicken, beat off, you know? <laughs> yeah, but if you just said, dude, I got to go eat this chicken, he would be like, of course, you yeah, stop. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, would be like you know Christ what? <laughs> for chugging a beer. Like, whoa, I got to see the most him thing. Maybe that's what it is. I hate, I hate, I hate for them to see me like laid bare like that. Yeah, it's one yeah. thing. I love getting run into at the gym. Are you kidding me? Ah, I right, love right. people having a. You know, he's. Act, I actually saw him at the yes, gym. Yes, yeah. That's where I want to be fucking spotted. Right. You know what I mean? It's like exactly. I don't, don't want to be spotted doing the exact like. Because we were just talking about, like, off mic, we are talking about how, like, sometimes it's, like, a persona and all this stuff. Sure. But it's, like, I don't want to be spotted where it's, like, whoa, maybe it's even worse than he lets on. <laughs> you know? And that, the, when I go to that place, because you also have to pick it up. Right. Usually when you're in a fucking, when you're ready to go, when you're ready to give in to your addictions, 
you order seamless. Yep. You know what I mean? You text a drug dealer. Mm-hmm. You don't have to like go outside. Yeah. But this place is is no there's no delivery. Oh. So they force you to go make a what you know, make a walk. And that, you know, I'm vulnerable there. I so I won't it. say it, but yeah, we had some chicken last time. Yeah, well the fan interaction's tough because it's always I love the fans, and I don't want to sound ungrateful, but yeah. it's always a tad long. There's no out. <laughs> right, you know? right, right, right. You know, they go, oh, dude, I'm a huge fan. Listen to the pod. Yeah. Love your comedy. And you go, thank you, man. And that should be it. Yeah, but there's yeah, always, yeah. like, the... Or a picture. Yeah, picture's great. I actually love a picture because there's a definitive, here's what we're doing. I love the picture. Two back and forths, a snap, thanks, brother. Yeah. You're the man, and I love that stuff. But, yes, there's... Sometimes if it becomes like a walk and talk. Yeah, oh, the walk and tough. talk is tough. Where, you're, where you happen to be going the same way, and then you have to turn a corner, pretend yeah. you're walking a different way. Right, you know what I mean? right, like, exactly. Yeah. But the best is a bike ride. You get the guy like, fat rascal! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Some nice. honking. Yes. I, lo- I love a honk. <laughs> um, have, you ever been, was, have you ever been caught in like an embarrassing place? Been like, mm. been seen somewhere. You're like, ah, uh. uh, geez, I guess uh, not really. It's more like a line or, or a line right. or a, right. or you're at the light with a guy right. and you're both going uh, the same way. The airport yeah. is tough. Airport is tough. Airport lounge because you're really oh, hungover. The airport it's lounge early. is brutal. I'm, just, I'm like, I'm gonna eat every meatball here. Yes, yes, yes. Every yes, meatball. Yes, I'm going yes. to the open bar. I'm getting Bloody Marys and I'm yes. just gonna sit here. I'm, I'm I've arrived there. Yeah, and yeah I'm yeah. going. <laughs> you know, I've arrived in Denver and I'm hitting the bar. <laughs> And then there's a guy like, dude, I'm yeah. getting a Bloody Mary too. What are we doing? And, yeah, 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 yeah. and then this is my favorite when you go, uh, they go, I'm a huge fan. You go, I got a show tonight. They go, yeah, I got to get out of here. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah, I thought yeah. you were a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, the airport's another good one because that's you're you're an animal in the airport. An animal. Once yeah. I got recognized at the steam in a steam room oh. in uh, uh, Montana. Oh, Montana! And the guy goes, "I don't have my glasses on, but you sound like this comedian." And I go, "Oh yeah, yeah." And he was like, "I don't know the guy, but I don't, I, you don't look like him, but you sound like him." And uh, he's super annoying. But, uh, no. You sound just like him. And I was like, oh, that guy's the worst. Yeah, and fuck him. I got out of there before he put the glasses yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, you let him finish blowing you, and then you left. <laughs> You're like, this tastes like what I imagine Mark Norman's penis to taste like. I don't have my glasses on, though. It tastes like yeast. <laughs> yeah. Somebody pop up in a crescent roll. <laughs> Uh, so you got the you got soup to nuts coming out on the big end. Oh yeah, uh, go watch that, folks on on your streamers. Check it out. Um, you recorded that in Chicago, right? I think I Chicago we Vic can, Theater. We were at the Vic. I think maybe like a week after. Oh great! You it was like two weeks it. after. That. Great, great, great. I mean, from the I haven't obviously haven't seen it. We're recording this before, but it's out, and when this comes out, it'll be out. I haven't seen it, but the trailer looked. You guys made that place look awesome, dude. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate love it. Love the background. Thank love you. Love the little tinsel. Love the you know little a little texture to it. Um, I saw a music video. Oh, it's going to escape me, the name. It's this, like, kind of black, bluesy band, and it was such a cool look. And I said, I want that, like, that kind of gritty 70s taxi driver yeah, look yeah, with yeah. the tinsel and all that, and they, they fucking nailed it. That's awesome, yeah. That's fucking... I love Chicago. Why'd you do Chicago? Any well, I, I'm, I'm such a road psycho that I blew out all my markets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Chicago, it's such a great comedy town, so I was like, let's try there. And we sold out four, but I'm the only... Tard who booked it on St. Patty's Day. Oh no! I didn't even think about it. No! So the, the river's green. I show up. Oh, it's the... I think I, dude, I think I on purpose was offered that date and didn't take it. Because uh, I was like, St. Patrick's Day? I took what kind it. of dickhead would do yeah, this? Exactly. And then you recorded your special yes. on it? I mean, <laughs> drunk, heckle, fist fights. I saw a couple breaking up. A guy almost fell off the balcony. The cops took a guy out at one point. That was show one. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah. It was, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did four, thank God. You recorded all four? Yeah, we got it on the last one. The other three were almost worthless. That's hysterical. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. So we got some behind the scenes of me being like, fuck you, man, it's my special. Yeah. You're, not as, you're not as sharp because you're of like, course. this you're is worried. my moment. This is all I have. And then they're yeah. like, hey, you homo. And I'm like, eh, I got nothing. <laughs> you know? Well, quiet down, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I, I, this cost a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, dude. No, that's that that. I mean, that town is a pretty drunk town in general. But St. Oh, yeah. Patrick's Day, even though they don't have that many Irish, I don't think. No, I think they're Do there. They? I think they're there. Yeah, I just figure everyone in Chicago is just like. I mean, I guess they claim they're Irish. 
Right. But it's everyone's like, I just feel like everyone's like Polish and German and there's a lot of that, that kind yeah. of thing. I never got these people get really into their ethnicity. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, I actually don't like when someone's been here for like, someone's family's been here for like six generations. Right. Or, or four generations, whatever. And it's like, you don't speak the language. If you went back, if you went back to this country... How would you be perceived? I think is the Ooh, big. Oh, that's great. That's the big determining factor for me. Yeah. Because none of those motherfuckers. One of those guys go goes to Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah like that episode of The Sopranos where they go back to Italy is <laughs> fucking. Per- and they're all making fun of Paulie. Yeah. Because he asks for gravy, and they're like, "The f- gravy." It's like, it's like meeting a wigger. Yeah. You know, yeah. Black yeah. Come on, what are you doing? No, no one talks like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So true. Now they always take their good parts. You know, they're like, "Well, you know, I'm Italian, or I'm a, I'm, sp- I'm Spanish, so I'm, I'm feisty, or yeah, I'm yeah, passionate." Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. never take the. They're not like, oh, "I hit my wife because I'm Italian." <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. always the good. I want to have sex with my mother. I'm Italian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and also I'm. By the way, uh, enough with Italians. Ah. I'm just. It's like they've milked it. <laughs> if, what a take. If they don't have Scorsese, yes, they're fucked. <laughs> they got fucking nothing. The Godfather is a good movie, but it's not. Yeah. It's actually not very realistic to how the mafia actually worked, and it wasn't actually like like Mario Puzo was just like he was right like that. Uh, I haven't read the book. But people say the book's not. It's one of the rare times where the movie blows the book out of the oh, water. Oh, right, the book was a huge hit. It was a huge hit, but it was like it was a huge hit, and when there was no fucking television, right? It was a huge hit back when a novel, a a like a pop, essentially popcorn novel. When mo- novels like even that for a sentence. The book was a hit. Yeah. Imagine saying that about anything today. Right. You know what I mean? It's like the last one where you could say that about is literally what Harry Potter. Harry Potter, yeah. You know, it's like we're done, and that was children's stuff. So, but yeah, they don't have Scorsese, and I, you know, and and I love, I love The Sopranos too. But it's just right. like, stop. You're <laughs> fucking white people. You're a regular ass type of guy. Yeah. There's nothing that special about being fucking Italian. Well, they had you were it. fucking criminals. Yes. Okay. The best thing was you were criminals, but guess what? You're not a fucking criminal. You didn't do it. First of all, those people are abhorrent people <laughs> that suck their community dry like fucking vampires mm, with oil in their hair. True. And also, you don't have the guts to be that guy. You pretend to, now this generation of like you don't you talk. Worse, nobody they put on accents now, and it's like it's this whole like you're not not that interesting, yeah, except for Scorsese and and the Sopranos. No good art has come from Italians, <laughs> it did. I mean, you know, you had Michelangelo, yeah, and, and, the fuck, and all yeah, that, yeah, 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 the great stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, nothing new, really. Well, and especially not Americans, yeah, no yeah. American Italians again, other than Martin Scorsese. Complete pass. The God. I and, love and that guy. And you got guy. your De Niro's and your Pacino's. Sure, actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know what I'm saying. It's but just no, like, you're right. Well, they had Edge because they were discriminated against. Like, you know, like Frank Sinatra's dad had to call his bar O'Connor's. Oh, Because you couldn't call it Sinatra's. But that's a great point, though. When was that? Frank Sinatra's dad. 40s. <laughs> like that's, 30s, whatever. Frank Sinatra, long dead. Yeah. His father dealt yes, with it. Yes, yes, So that's exactly. another thing. Shut the fuck up, you dirty, and just let's bleep whatever I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. So you dirty, and then hit me with a beep, Eldis. I'm not, I don't want to get taken off. That's another thing. Italians would be the, the type to get, somehow... They would say it's hate speech against their race. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah if I said if I said a couple of the words that are dancing on my tongue right now, <laughs> and I will not, <laughs> and I will not. <laughs> but, but also, the weird thing about Italians is like I'm a half Sicilian. I don't yeah. I don't give a shit. But like. They started the Italian, what was that, Defamation League? Yeah, anti, Be- anti-Italian Defamation League. Yeah, because they kept being called the mobsters mafia and mobs and all that. Yeah, they started it. Well, the it. mafia literally started it. They started it. I forgot the guy's name uh, out he of New York. He got assassinated. He got killed in Central Park, I think. Yeah, he, he actually hated the Godfather. He was trying to get it not yes, to be made. Yes, yes, And yes. Uh, so they kill or he started this league, and you're like, this is the coolest thing about you guys. Yeah, Why yeah, would you yeah. want to make this bad? Yeah. You know, it's like being like uh, in the NAACP and be like, hey, we got to stop these rappers. The rappers yeah. are awesome. Yeah, yeah, Keep yeah. the rappers. Everybody loves it. Yeah. But they they, uh, they wanted to stop it. Also, it wasn't like a nice old lady who was like, this is yes. not my culture. Yes, You know exactly. what I mean? It was, you, it was the criminal Literally doing the it. the guy's doing it. So it's like you just don't want your shit. And also... 
And this is oh, I'm gonna I gotta do a little more research. I gotta have somebody. I gotta have like Matteo and De Stefano on at the same time to really do like a fuck Italy type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, De Stefano is actually the perfect example. First of all, he's German. Yeah, he's okay. very German. Look too. at that guy. He's a fucking kraut. <laughs> but, but Germans got no flavor. Yeah, you know, they're yeah, not cool. Yeah, they're yeah, fun. Yeah, no yeah, one's yeah. like, how are you going to do? Yeah, you know, that's, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. sexy. <laughs> um, but I also was reading something about how, like, and I'm going to do more research to really... This is this is raw, people, all right? You're getting the fuck Italian's take when I haven't really c- cooked it. I haven't really let the sauce stay on the pan all day. <laughs> yeah. to use To use some parlance, you, mu- you fucking idiots might understand. I haven't caramelized the onions yet. Um, but I was reading something about how that their, even their food culture is like almost a complete like fabrication of like the last 50, 60 years. Mm. Like there's not... All that shit of like you know chicken parm, all the, it's all like American fake bullshit. Oh, like really? there is no in the old country. Uh-huh. Like we were, st- you know, making sauce for fucking eight hours. Like the, you that's know, not a, that wasn't a thing there. And I read one thing one second oh, on boy. Twitter, and I am going with it. <laughs> you are all frauds. Woo! And look, I know the thing too. Like Greek people, Greek food. Like I have a bit on the new special that comes out. Uh, it comes out on a, on a streamer that will not be named later in November, December. But I have a bit about um, how Greeks really are, we're pretty much Arabs. Mm. Like, we're much closer to Arabs than we are anything else. Really? If you think about it, yeah. Because, like, I th- and I don't want to step, you know, I don't want to ruin the bit or whatever, but whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Basically, the point is, I think Greeks are only considered white because white people want to claim ancient Greece. Yes. But, like, our, look at our food. Like that's a defining characteristic. Like Greek food, it's pretty. Like that's everyone, true. It's, pita it's pitas, it's and, skewers. And, yeah, hummusy stuff. That white yeah, sauce. Yeah, we have we have tzatziki, which is like a, the yogurt base. Yeah, like we we don't really fuck with hummus actually, but we oh. have like our own like uh, eggplant dip, fish ah. fish roe dip, right? Yogurt dip, all that stuff. And I'm admitting, like, you have to realize, like, that's kind of because we were taken over by the fucking Ottoman Empire. Mm. And, like, for a huge chunk of our history, we were under, like, Turkish rule. And that's why, like, the best Greek, one of the best Greek foods, a gyro, is, is pork. And we just got, that was the only fucking thing. Uh, Muslims would eat pork. So they would let their fucking Christian, like, Oh. Sem- we weren't slaves like that's a great thing Greek people like to say like hey we were slaves too we should be able to say it <laughs> you know like I've had so many Greek people say that shit but anyway there's all my point is just like no one is actually as cool as they think they are of everyone course. who clings onto their like identity it's like it's all mythology and it's all fake right and Italians are getting away with it way too much in my opinion yeah they're, they, they're milking be- the shit there's out of it. four awesome movie three awesome movies and a TV show and those cocksuckers are think they're set for life, and it's like I want to see something new. Yeah. I'm tired of it. Yeah. Fuck Italy. No, actually, Italy's cool. Fuck it. Fuck Italian American. Fuck Italian Americans. Well, pizza helped them out too. They've been, they've been holding on to pizza, pizza like it's huge. grim death. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't have it the way we have it here. That's another thing. Yeah, I had it over there. I went to Rome, and I was like. Eh, yeah, that was fine. Yeah, I was yeah. The, the rays, yeah, you know, yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's how it, I went to China once too, and I was like, "Let me get the real, authentic Chinese food." Sucked, yeah. sucked. <laughs> so bland and weird. I'm like, yeah. "What's that?" They're like, "That's ox dick." And I'm like, "I don't want ox dick. I want fucking General Tso's." Oh, we yeah. Americanize the shit up General with sauce Tso's, and yeah. sugar. General Tso's is like created like St. Louis or I something. Know, there's no way. There's no way of fucking. <laughs> Some Chinese guy that will never leave his province yes, has never yes. heard of General Tso's. Oh, no. no. <laughs> There's one that was made in Springfield, Missouri. That You land there. They're like, we're the home of uh, something what? chicken. Oh, well. Uh, some Chinese sweet chicken. Sweet and sour, probably. Something like that, yeah. That weird super fried shit that Eldis likes <laughs> oh, with that fucking so red ass sauce. Oh, That basically yeah. pink sauce. Yeah. Disgusting. Looks like ectoplasm yeah, or yeah, some yeah, shit. Yeah, it, yeah. Looks, <laughs> it looks radioactive. Yeah, it looked like if from uh, the, the alien. Uh, the xenomorph it looked like if it's pussy gets wet that's what it secretes <laughs> it's like green is their blood bright red is their pussy juice <laughs> oh man you must have been a weird kid <laughs> uh, anyway but yeah dude that, that, anyway fuck Italy and 
We'll move on. We also just got, we should talk about, we just got back from Fully Loaded, too, which is oh, fucking Oh, dude, incredible. I was fried. So fucked up. My body hurts. Yeah. <laughs> My body is in fucking full pain. That's the thing. It's the best time, but it takes a year off your life. We slip and slide. I mean, you fucked me up with the nut shot. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, That was my fa- my best comedic moment is <laughs> they were pouring ice all over Mark to do like a, oh, isn't this crazy video? Yeah. And I just had a Nerf football in my hand, and Mark's like, ah, and I just nail him in the nuts. And yeah. I, my the thing like people have like you know taken a joke or they've they taken posted some of my shit without you know whatever the thing I felt the worst about was not being in that video like I wanted just I a, a pan over to me dying because yeah. I don't think I get credit for I really nailed Mark right in the ball I'm gonna tag you in the video just <laughs> yeah. for because but it's, that's, that's not what it, it's it's. I'm lo- it's lost to history. But you, you have been to be there. in the video. Though. That's crazy. You know, uh, it was a it pan. was a spur of the moment. It was a spur of the moment. No one knew I was going to hit you in the nuts. It was kind of a Harvey Oswald. We're like, who's the shooter? Yeah, we have no yeah. idea. That sucks. You got no credit for uh, that. But, but it, it was, was all him. It was my favorite moment of the tour was nailing oh, you in the balls. So fun. But yeah. it was great. But yeah, it was fucking. If, if America's Funny Zone videos was around, we would have gotten the winning. Because <laughs> it was too perfect. Because I was all jacked up from the cold water. <laughs> yeah. And I, didn't, I had no protection. Like, I had no defense. You know, Usually you see something coming, you're like, whoa. But uh, yeah. it was wide open. It was I, like the Star Wars scene. And the, uh, the trench. Yeah. You nailed it right in that hole. It felt so good. It connected so nice. Oh, I was out for 30 minutes. <laughs> saw that one. But uh, great time. We did a lot of shrooms. A lot of shrooms on the river. Yeah. That was a good fucking time, man. But yeah, I feel so, so fucked up. I flew. I saw you missed your flight. I did. Don't even. Yeah. All that, right. We won't that, get into that it. That tough. The bus. That's tough. The bus just didn't get there on time. Yeah, they couldn't. We were get just in. chilling. I know it was, it was at, some at dumb... a different place for hours. Yeah, it was and some then we dumb just reason. <laughs> it was bad. What are you gonna do? I made mine and I flew right to Nashville. Well, I'm on uh, like an hour and a half sleep oh or whatever God. it was, you and, Theo's and, and I did Theo's pot. So uh, Theo's all like, "Gang, gang, you're yeah, jumping yeah, off yeah. the walls, <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing yeah, all yeah. this shit." And I'm like, "Yeah, man, I know. <laughs> yeah. dude." Having the idea of doing a podcast oh, the next day, brutal. It's one of the worst things. I, I mean, it was hell. I, I I mean, missing my flight was brutal, but like a full. I literally just got into a hotel and slept for twenty hours. I'm so jealous. Like I kind of, in a weird way, needed that. Of course. But I, I now don't get me wrong. I would have preferred to just pass out on the. But literally, my stomach was hurting like a baby does. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the problem with bur- the, that tour. Is like not only are you hung over. But every snack you can possibly conceive of mm-hmm. is on the bus or available of to course, you. Of so course, of course. So I was starting to, I like, I was hungover, but the more, the most damage I did was just eating too much. Like, like a little kid that gets to go, like, this would happen to me every time. This is just to tell you who I am. Uh-huh. The worst stomach aches I ever got in my life was the first time I would, I was allowed to go to like a wedding or a baptism oh, as a little yeah. kid. And your parents are, you know, having a couple cocktails. They're not paying attention. I would literally be a fat, like, seven-year-old yeah. having every dessert, drink it, guzzling Shirley Temples, oh, yeah. asking for extra maraschino cherries, yep. you know, and just, I remember <laughs> being on the bathroom at seven years old and being like, oh, uh, and praying to God, yeah. being like, please, God, I've learned my lesson. Uh, <laughs> I will never overeat again. Oh, <laughs> man. We gotta get this. I'm fat girl crying in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta help her out, dude. Literally, since the time I was seven years old, that's what would happen to me. Damn. And then this this shit was like, it was like that where it was like, you have access to anything at any moment. I know it's the, fucked the up. Chips, the candy. It's weird too being a, a fat kid and eating like that because usually you get your drug or your vice later. Right, like I didn't right, say right. guzzling booze. I was, you know, eighteen, seventeen, <laughs> right, or whatever. Right, but you right, were in right. there at seven, seven years old. Yeah, having the exact substance abuse problems that I have now. Yeah, <laughs> and and getting fucked up in that same way where I was just like, oh, I, like it felt like a high. Right, and then it's just like you just layer. My whole life has just been layering other shit on top of that. <laughs> it's like it's like fattish. You know, it's like yeah. that. Then probably weed. Yeah. Then. I mean, honestly, booze has never been an issue for me. I, I will, I could, even when I was completely sober off weed, I would, on the road, I might have a cocktail or two, because it just never was an issue for me. But, mm. like, you go weed, then probably pussy, and then pills, oh, which pills are awesome. Are fun. Pills but are those great. are the latest in the mix. Of course. And also, they came, like, 
at a point where I was like, yeah, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, I, you, when you're like, this is one, th- these other things are one thing, and they will fuck up my life. In the long run, totally. But this in two years, yeah, I'll be fucked. Totally. And I, this feels too awesome. Ah, uh, the best. <laughs> this is like too fucking good. What but are we yeah. talking like Xanax? Or are you talking like Percocet? Xanax and Percocets and just kind of like yeah, that's that's actually the big three. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> those, are, those are the fucking good ones for yeah. me. Um, and then you know, but psychedelics, I don't really consider. Yeah, we were popping mushrooms that's, like candy. That that's was nothing. Easy. That's nothing. If anything, you'll just have like, I literally have. Moments of clarity on mushrooms Same. where I'm like, I learned lessons. I've started relationships because of mushrooms. I've been like, this is fucked up. I can't be a part of this because of my, like, it's just Ooh. like, there's so much stuff where I'm like, damn, I'll always have an awesome time. And then I will usually have one minor to major life revelation. Wow. It's, that's great. It's crazy. Yeah, I get yeah. all lovey and, and like unnecessarily lovey. Like oh, I was like, nice. I love your clips, man. And I went yeah, to Bruce yeah. Bruce. I got him in a headlock and he's yeah. like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> we haven't even met yet. I was like, oh, sorry about shrooms. <laughs> I'm like getting his tits together <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah, motorboating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Me, like Bruce, Bruce, being on a show with Bruce Bruce. and you, Were you there for Vegas with Louis Black? Or no? no, I wish. That I love was Louis awesome. Black. He's the man, dude. He's the man. He did our podcast and killed it. Yeah, yeah. He's... I, uh, no, maybe we, you know, maybe yeah. he might be on this couch. Who's to say? There you go. Uh, we're gonna try. It doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, he would do it. No, I think he'll do it. We get we get Mo Rocca instead. Uh, <laughs> Remember that fucking guy? Of course. <laughs> that guy popped on my TV too much. <laughs> was, in, in the late '90s, he was everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That was a bit. I, I is he gay? I don't know. I just remember, I think I found out later that he was gay, and I remember be feeling, like, growth, because I was like, oh, that he is gay, okay. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I, I, I exactly, I, that to me was growth, because I was like, I hate this. I was like, because I feel like everyone I grew up with, all the old Greek guys, would hate a guy like that because he's gay. And then I was like, hey, I actually don't care that he's gay. He's just a fucking annoying nerd. <laughs> and I remember being like, maybe progress is possible. There you when go. I was like, when I found out, I was like in college when I found out he was gay. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, hey, I, maybe I can be better <laughs> than the fucking idiots I grew up around. That's the key to progress. Just be so much worse than your at minority thing. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Just yeah, be yeah. a douche and black. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, it does feel good to be making progress, and then you know, maybe my son won't be homophobic at all. There you go. Good <laughs> luck. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it'll all come back. Like everything comes back around. He like like Jew hate kind of came back. Oh yeah, unfortunately. I mean, yeah, we're in a fucked up place where yeah. these things where I was like, wait, some of you are Nazis. I and know. you're cool with that? I know. Your grandfather fought in the war. Like, we're not even that far away. You'd think yeah. it would take 100 years. Totally. I, although, I guess to be fair, World War II was what, 1930-something? No, yeah, late 30s and then So I guess 42. maybe it literally has been almost 100 years. Almost. There you go. That's fucked up, dude. It's all cyclical. Pendulum Damn. always swings back. Which is scary because you see all this, people are attacking. I mean, yeah, it was really annoying when that happened because it's like, the, well, that whole rant I went on about Italians, I used to say that kind of shit to my Jewish friends, where it's yeah. like, "Relax, right. you got it. Shit's good for you." Yeah, you're and fine. And then, and then all these fucking just fucking idiots, anti-Semitic, like DeSantis, Trump, far right, like you know, Jews will not replace us style yeah, guys. Yeah. And it's like, oh fuck. I know. Now I and it's like, not only am I scared for what this means for our country, but now. I gotta listen to some of the most annoying people in the world <laughs> have a legitimate gripe. Right, <laughs> like right. Like, you can't even, and they are the best at complaining. Oh, the best black <laughs> so, belt. So now I'm fucked. They have a point, and they're the best at it. Yeah. I'm just gonna hear it. And you gotta be nice. <laughs> and I'm on their side. Yeah. And I'm annoyed. <laughs> it really puts you in a fucked up position. Yeah, that's, that's tough. the. I think we can all agree that's the worst part of anti-Semitism. Agreed. Is <laughs> <laughs> listening to the. Jews have a point. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> God damn. The bagel arguing we can deal with. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Worse. At a certain point, you could be like, we'll move from out, from away from the vent. Yes, I'll switch with yes. you if it's that annoying. It's drafty. If you're that cold, we'll switch seats. Right, yes, or like the portions are small. Yeah, we yeah, it. yeah. yeah. Right. At a certain point, you just tell them to shut the fuck up. Yeah, but when yeah. you're like, somebody put a bullet hole through my synagogue, and you have to be like, all right, uh, you get seven minutes that yeah. I have to listen to this now. Uh, heard that old, uh, remember that old street joke, uh, the Jewish pedophile? Easy kid, not so much candy. <laughs> That's like, that's a hundred year old joke. No, that's a classic. Classic. Now, folks, that's a classic. Then uh, that's YouTube. That's what we call satire here on Stavi's World. Go. So please don't. You've been demonetizing a lot of our videos. Love the Jews. So please don't. We're pro Jew at that bit. Yeah, Roseanne's on next week. So. <laughs> right. We do have to have the uh, competing view. I do wonder if the Jews are more against you guys with the uh, the anteaters. You know, oh, hey, these, interesting. these two fucking uh, interesting. hooded Oh, dicks you think that's what here. it is? I think that factors <laughs> in because they're all about the snip. <laughs> they are. They really are. I, I've said the story before on the podcast where you make that joke as like, oh, only an idiot would think that. But I remember when I, I had like you're like I was having pissing problems mm. and I went to a urologist and when I was like in college or whatever and <clears throat> whatever they never really fixed it. I just piss all the time now and they're like hey this is basically what's gonna happen or they there was this procedure where they would like go up your ass and poke your dick hole out or something what? and I was like or you know what it was there was this procedure they wanted to do where they would put a something in your dick fill your bladder with piss and then you were just kind of like you would have to just like, they would like watch you piss. Mm. You just have to like, they would like pump your shit up and they would take all these notes and then they would do something where they would like go through your, and I was like, I'll just piss a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, like, I'm yeah. good. That's I'll just, nightmare. I'll just, I won't drink too much water before a three hour movie for the rest of my <laughs> yeah, life. Yeah. Or I'll always know where the bathroom is right. for the rest. I'll sit in the aisle for the rest of my life. Yes. Um, instead of having, you know, like a Jamaican nurse put a pro, a, a tube up my dick. I heard the same about it. They would put a Q-tip in your dick hole. That was how you tested for gonorrhea or something. Well, that, I was like, I'll I just got, have gonorrhea. Yeah, that, I can't yeah, do yeah. that. My friend did. He said it was the most painful thing he's ever done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I actually had that happen to you me. You did it? In college, when like I was the like, Q-tip? I was just scared that I I had gotten like blown, and I was like, uh, "What if I have AIDS?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was a gay guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, how bad was it? <laughs> it was hor 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 horrific. Uh, I had yeah. I had one of those two, and it feels really so fucked up. You're like, yeah. you're like, well, you know, when you get a shot with a needle. It it's kind of fucked up, but whatever. This no, like, this was one of the worst things. You don't forget that time. feeling. And it's like, come out. It's a split second, and they don't even go that deep. They just go like uh, right on the uh, inside. Uh, of you know what? I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> I'm having the phantom uh, Q tip in my it's dick. It's fucked up. Yeah. It's funny that on the package, like, don't put these in your ears. Like, no, no, don't put them in your dick. <laughs> that's way worse. I put them in my ears every day. Oh, uh, fuck. Anyway, I thought, I feel like I was making some point, but who gives a fuck? Mm. Um,. Anyway. I feel like there's going to be a bunch of angry Italians at your shows fuck now. Fuck them. <laughs> All right. Come see me, you fucking dirty bee, <laughs> elders. <laughs> well, I just kind of, I, I do feel it from like a Greek standpoint, too, where I'm just like, you know, we're, and I used to have a joke that was too, Gary Goldman had a great joke, and I was like, uh, I had a joke that was like kind of similar to that, so I cut it. I, I never did it, but it is, I didn't do it on a special or anything. But it was the thing of like, guys, come on, how long are we gonna hold on to fucking ancient Greece? Oh, that <laughs> like, is a great like joke. we're we're fucking. Yeah. It's been a fucking while. Right, right. And uh, but I do love. I mean, that's the other thing. There's that's what I mean about Italians. It's like there's great shit about your country, but it's not it's not your fucking great uncle who shook down a laundromat, who like didn't <laughs> was too stupid to get a fucking job, so he beat up like you know it's like the ma it's like it's like the mafia was a bunch of fucking you know you know what I'm not gonna it's, it's over, over. It's, it's, yeah. Olive Garden now. it's Olive That's Garden it. yeah, 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 yeah enjoy yeah, your yeah. Olive Garden or go to Italy it's beautiful or go to Italy. look at amazing. this this is Greece it's fucking awesome yeah you know very nice I like going to that and you know what? their history is interesting but that can be a party you never hear those guys talk about the fucking Colosseum. 
That's more impressive. Oh, yeah, right? You know what I mean? That's like, incredible. At least talk about that shit. Talk about ancient Rome, who stole everything from ancient Greece, Ooh, by the way. columns. <laughs> what about... The, Pedophilia. They, this, this is where we get dice, but weren't they hooking up with Germany in the war? Rome? Italy? Italy? Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, how the fuck did they get a... That's a great point. I have a point. That's a great point, dude. They were an ally yeah, or whatever. Just, yeah. Pizza's not that good. <laughs> yeah, you had Mussolini. You had, it's, yeah, Mussolini, you're right. that was it. Mussolini, they, dra- they dragged that motherfucker They the occupied streets. Albania, one of the ugliest All right, moments relax. in the history. Oh, relax. Shit. I forgot you were uh, an Albi. Uh, bro- Listen, the uh, uh, broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> Italy was on to something with that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, damn, dude, you know who told Italy to suck their cocks? You're looking at them. You fucking pussies couldn't hold them off. We had to fight a two-front war against Italy and Germany. One guy with a fucking calzone came in, through, <laughs> threw it at your fucking president's head. And he was like, ow! Take whatever you want. Not Greece, baby. We told those fucking beeps to suck our... Maybe that's really what this all comes down to is Greece fucked them up for a while in, ancient, in uh, World War II. Yeah, mm. we, we got scared and basically turned into, like, the North Korea of the Balkans <laughs> yeah, for, like, yeah, 80 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you were sucking dick on all sides. Damn, that is a you, s- that's in your blood from the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> These motherfuckers turned Muslim as soon as the Turks <laughs> came through. And then the Italians come by. They're like, whatever you want, sir. Uh, and then they're communist after that. They'll do whatever the fuck a guy with a gun tells them to. No heart in that country. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, uh, the Greeks, the Italian, that is an oily fucking it fight. Is, it know? is, yeah, like, yeah, it is. You know it got you, slippery on those yeah, mountaintops. Yeah. <laughs> you know when your car leaves the driveway and it's sitting there and there's that black stain? Yeah. <laughs> That's what the whole land looked like. Well, we fought a lot. It was like a lot of like guerrilla shit where we try. We fought them in like the mountains. And oh, like, yeah. And, like, and it really did take Germany. Like Germany got pissed because they were like, how the f- we were literally fighting them with like sticks and shit. Right. They're like, how do you fucking dumb Italians not beat Greece? And they're like, oh, we don't know. We're stupid. We don't fight the good. We a uh, pussy. Uh, <laughs> anyway, all right. I've I've shit on Italy enough. Italians enough. Um, uh, I do have love for the for the country. I just think. A little much, a little too proud. That's yeah, all yeah. I'm saying. Yes, beautiful countryside. Beautiful, beautiful countryside. Beautiful women and beautiful women, and I still like a nice slice. And sure, you know, I'll eat a chicken parm, no problem. Hell yeah! And I love, and I love the Godfather. Chaz Palminteri's a good guy. Yeah, there you <laughs> you go. Know, yeah, there you but go. <laughs> but you fucking Staten Island pieces of shit can suck my dick. Uh, anyway, I mean, we'll do Irish next show. Oh yeah, they're a little much as well. The Irish the can tattoos. also suck my dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I like just those. The you've been here four generations, yeah. and you have created this fake, like, uh, ancestry that didn't exist anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like that's the other thing. The, they're talking about these like, like, uh, the Irish are just like the first. And yeah, you were oppressed for seven years. And then the second you could be cops, you're like, can I have that baton to hit a black person, Ooh, please? Ooh, interesting. So at least Italians had the decency to become criminals. Ah. I'll give them that. I will give them that. They weren't right. sucking on the, they weren't bootlicking fascist cocksuckers in the same way uh-huh. that the Irish got the first drop of a baton to hit a fucking Mexican with. They took it. So anyway, fuck, fuck them too. All right, I've done enough uh, white race bashing <laughs> for, the, for, for this episode. <laughs> go check out Soup to Nuts, folks. There you go. We got a lot of Irish jokes, a lot of WAP jokes. They're all in there. I get the mix, the WAPs, the muzzies. He's you got know, them all. Yeah, the um, Jews, they're all going down. They're all taking it. So why don't we take some questions here, I'll just Let's use some of Mark's beautiful expertise um, and let's fucking answer some, some life queries. Hell yeah. God, you going on, fat PC? fuck, I love you. It's not coming through, dumbass. Listen to this, all right? <laughs> Stop, you fat fuck, I love you. Okay. Listen to this, all right? I just got out of the Marine Corps about two years ago. I've been dating a girl uh, since I was in the Marine Corps. We've been together three years. I recently took a job in Texas. Um, she was in North Carolina. We've kind of been doing long distance for a while now, and we decided, hey, we're going to get engaged and mm. come down to Texas. So I drive up to North Carolina with a, no. excuse me, I fly up to North Carolina, it's I get a U-Haul truck, 
and I'm going to take Pause it. my stuff and her stuff down. For- Can you translate? I'm, I'm a little lost. He's definitely, but so yes, I'm just going to, I'm just going to call what's happened here. This guy's getting cucked is my, my oh. guess. That's my guess. I haven't heard. I have no prior knowledge. Uh, but anyway, he said, so to translate so far, he was in the Marine Corps yeah. for two years, which if he, if he isn't about to tell us he got cucked, he probably got cucked while he was in the Marine Corps. Ooh. And now he's long distance and him and this girl are going to get engaged. And he's driving from Texas to North Carolina with a U-Haul truck. Oh, and no. And we're about to, f- now look, I might be wrong, yeah. but we're about to find out what happened. Oh, God. North Carolina to Texas. Just bought her a house in Texas, had an engagement ring ready, and as soon as I get there, all she talks about is not wanting to move to Texas and oh. not wanting to travel oh. away from her family. Uh, while I'm there, I get a job offer to go to, over to Italy for two years <laughs> and travel in Italy. Um, Beautiful place. Again, kind of a contract <laughs> job for government, <laughs> and she doesn't want to go to Italy either. Uh. So the day comes around that I'm supposed to leave, and she basically just stalls and stalls and stalls and isn't ready. Does the house isn't clean, isn't packed. So I just leave. Now she's like, "I want to come with you. I want to get engaged. I want to be married. Like, let's do this." Um, whereas I've already taken back the ring, hmm. got get my out. money back, and all that. What do you think I should do? Should I take her back because we were together for three years? Should I go to Italy and just party it up by myself for two years? Or should I kind of stay in Dallas single and see where things play out between me and her? uh, Or also between myself and the the native Texans? Uh, Let me know. Thanks. Okay. Interesting. So... Mar- you knee jerk reaction is get out of there. Right? Yeah, like she's wishy washy, and you're gonna marry her. I mean, this is crazy. Here's another thing. Did he say how old he is? No. So he said he got out of the Marine Corps. Yeah. He sounds young. He's got to be early twenties. That's what I'm guessing. It's like early to mid twenties, buddy. If she's being weird, maybe it's the age, right? If she's also like twenty three, then you know what? You know, and look, I don't want to push my lifestyle on anyone. I'm not saying that like. Definitely not my lifestyle. My lifestyle is a fucking mess. But but like, my I always think you shouldn't really get married in your early twenties as yeah, a rule, right? Definitely. I'm not saying it's not going to work for some people. It will work for. There's exceptions that basically prove the rule. Mm-hmm. But it, for the most part, you this doesn't sound like the type of people that should be married. No, no, no. Also, you kind of see the delusion and the how much gullibleness it takes to join the military. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. We, we appreciate your service and all that, and Marie, and that's impressive. Yeah, Hoorah! Yeah. But like, dude, yeah, you got yeah, the yeah. wool over. Yeah, I mean, this yeah, guy yeah, is, yeah. Is, that's is a great point. Easily tricked. Yeah. <laughs> no offense. Get out, man. Go to Italy. Live your exactly. life. Exactly. Go, go be an American soldier in Italy. Clean it up with that Italian clam. Absolutely. That's what I was just gonna say. You're young. This relationship is fucking weird, one way or the other. She might be doing the classic, like, especially if she's younger, and especially if she doesn't want to, like, a lot of people will not just take initiative. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'll be like, oh, they'll, how many times, and I've, I've been guilty of this, I'm sure you've been guilty of this, where it's like you basically know you're checked out of a relationship. Yeah, oh yeah. Or even, not even a full relationship, but just a, you're kind of casually dating someone, and you, you're too much of a coward to just be like, hey... This has run its course. I like you, but I don't see anything in the future. Good luck. Yeah. And you just kind of act like a piece of shit. Yep. Until someone breaks up with you. Story of my life. And then you regret it. Right. Yes. I didn't, didn't want to be too direct, but <laughs> yeah. when I say I'm sh- when I said I'm sure you've done this, I'm, <laughs> what I meant was I know you have <laughs> in almost every facet of your life. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of my family yeah, by doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's not working. <laughs> um, and so. She could just be doing this, right? Where she's too much of a coward yes. to be like, this is weird. And look, let's also, a little devil's advocate here, you know, from her side of things, you were gone for two years. Mm. As soon as you get back, you take a job in a different state. So now it's like, maybe she's like, oh, I miss him. We'll be in the same town finally. Sounds like you got a job in Texas without really consulting her. Ooh, good point. And then you bought a house in a ring without consulting her about Texas. That's kind of crazy on your part. Yep. Right? Like, you can't just be like, hey, this place you have your life, 
well, I've decided we should actually move somewhere else. Yeah. Without having so there's a little bit of immaturity on your part too, where you kind of jumped the gun. Agreed. But either way, right? It sounds like you're both kind of young, and I don't know that it's meant to. You, I wouldn't get married. That's for sure. No. And I'm kind of with Mark here, where it's like you're young. This kind of this maybe it hasn't run its course. Maybe there's something there, but. Go and live your life. Yeah. Two years in Italy where you're not, you know, I don't know what kind of job you said. Is it like a contractor job? I don't know if he has to re-enlist in the army. Dude. But I prefer if you don't have to enlist in the army, if it's just a contractor job. Is that what he said? Yeah, I think he said it was like some government job over there. Okay, whatever. As long as it's not like you don't have to re-enlist. You're not a fucking soldier. Mm. As long as you have your freedom, basically. Like, go spend some time where you're not fucking, you know being actively brainwashed where you yeah. get to just be a human being in a beautiful place, right? For all the shitting on on third generation Italians we just did. <laughs> Italy is fucking beautiful. Amazing. And also also have a different experience. Yes. A grow as a person. Go I would say be single, take two years in Italy and take it as an opportunity to really think about what you want. Because you might a little be a little bit beyond the like Enlist, get out, get married track that so That's many it. so many people are on without thinking about it. Take a little time to really think about what you want because it feels like you're on autopilot here. Right. So I've never and honestly, dude, you have such a perfect opportunity with two years in Italy where you kind of get to do the best parts of college. Ooh, where it's like yeah, and you, you get know, the culture. You get the culture. You get to grow as a person. I love I love this situation for you. You're set up in a nice way. As sad as a relationship ending, and as long as you're relatively young, you never said your age, but as long as you're a relatively young guy, it doesn't. And she's also relatively young. It doesn't sound like either of you is really ready for this. So go be your own fucking guy and and have some fun. Here, here, and I think these guys, these mil- I grew up a lot of military guys. These couple marine dudes. And they all need structure. Right. So I think this guy was out in the desert right. with a bunch of dudes and AK-47s. And he's like, I got my girl back home. Right. I'm going to marry her right, right when I get out. And he thought it was all this fairy tale bullshit. But life is full of nuance and yeah. and uh, and weird left turns. So Absolutely. there's no way it's going to just work out magically. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, get that ring back. Sell that house. Fool around in Dallas. There's a lot of hot ladies in Dallas. Live it up. And but then go don't to Italy. get tra- here's the thing. Don't get trapped in Dallas. <laughs> don't get trapped. Go to Italy immediately, motherfucker. Yes, yes. You- this go have a find yourself moment, and yes. then when you get back, get yourself some like you know some blonde blown out. Yeah, you know, with right. the, with the ha- big ass hair pussy in Dallas. <laughs> now you're talking. Now and you can get talking. some of that JFK head. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> he got get some sucked head off on the grassy knoll. Yeah. Um, uh, I, you know, I don't know that I, I don't fucking like, I don't like Dallas. I like it for a, it's a good comedy town, but I wouldn't live there. It's just too many malls and yes, it feels like everything is a fucking shopping center. It's, and it's sprawling. Like, it's all sprawl, highway. There's no like downtown or I guess even if there is it's bullshit yeah I like to me I really I really Houston's cool yeah I like Houston a lot even though it's a similar thing it's got it, a little culture to but it, it has there's some a lot of diversity yeah, 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 it's yeah, a, yeah. there's a different mix of all kinds of people it's got a little soul there's to way it. more art there's way more culture yeah. the food is interesting um and then Austin is its own thing obviously sure. it's this fucking thing that you know tech has kind of ruined now but mm. it was a cool was a it was cool. cool and still you know, you can still have a nice visit there. Yeah, and good the people. you know, the club's great over there. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, don't don't get trapped in Dallas. Go to Italy. Go go suck on some Apollonia from the Godfather titties. Oh yeah, she was awesome. Those were some of the first tits I saw. Really? Because my mom was a big. I, ironically enough, my mom who's like was pretty sh- like tried to keep us sheltered. She loved mob movies. Oh, interesting. So I do have this this special play. Like that's the other thing. I have a really special place in my heart for mob movies because it's mm. like one of the first, like my mom would take us to museums. She was mm. big into art. She was an artist herself. She would take me and my brothers to museums as little kids, but we were fucking seven yeah, and five. Yeah, yeah. And a, in a weird way, it paid off. I love museums now. And really? I think there is something to that where it's like, at the time I didn't like it, but now I'm like, oh, I really appreciate what she was doing for me. And some of that must have seeped in. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Maybe she was attracted to these swarthy dagos. Yeah, you know? yeah, Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they maybe, were kind of a slick. I mean, my hair. dad, my dad, swar- very swarthy man. Oh, okay, hairy. Yeah, slicked back, bald head. Like my dad was one of these guys that like puts hairspray on his three remaining hairs. <laughs> <laughs> my dad really has like Homer Simpson hair. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but slicked back and set it to the side. Right. So maybe that's her type. But yeah. Um, uh, fuck. What was? It? Oh yeah. So that was kind of the first titties I saw. Was because. My mom let me see The Godfather really young, and there were breasts in that, remember? His, oh, yeah, his, of course. Uh, Godfather 2, I believe. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, no, no, no. That was the first one. That was the first that one. They the go to one. Sicily? Well, yeah, where he's hiding out in Sicily. Yeah. And I was like, damn, what's up with these? Mm-hmm. This looks awesome. Good. That was when you had to get married to see those tits. And you know what's interesting? Oh, wow. I didn't even think. I didn't even put this together now till right now. In that movie, she has those. Her nipples are not hard at all. She's very puffy, oh, yeah. at rest titties. Pull them up if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, pull her, them up, Elvis. actually. Elvis, what are you doing, Come man? On. Hurry up, dude. What kind of producer are what you? Was her name? Apollonia, Apollonia Godfather Breasts. Apollonia. Surprise, that didn't ro- write itself out. Yeah. Breasts, Elvis. Come on. Come on, dude. Oh, yeah. She drops the 90. She drops the 90. Show them. Yeah. Oh, what? We have. You what, have you the child block on? You have, what the hell, Elvis? Oh, oh it's Pacino. <laughs> how did? How are you blowing this, man? Google's not what it used to be. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> I guess not, dude. It's this is culture. this is non-negotiable. You have to pull this up. Tits, oh, there yeah. you go, smart there man. There we go. Take Still the nothing. take the fucking sir, 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 safe search off, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, whatever. What are you we watching? It. Your mom's movie? This, this is, is crazy. crazy, dude. This oh, is there you okay. Go. Here we go. Blur. Now get we're the talking. hell out of here. That's fucked up, dude. Horrible. They're taking the internet away from us too, man. Yeah, it's not. But good. But I don't see her tits anyway. Yeah, breasts, nude, nude, eldest. Wow. <laughs> there. <laughs> Boy, that's you a see, supple. You see those tata. puffers? Oh yeah. And to this day. I like a loose at rest titty. I like a puffy, you know, little nip. That's puffy. I mean, I'll take I'll take a don't get me wrong, I'll take a little hard one too. Sure. Of course. But I I've had like girls in the past be like, uh oh uh, or like not send me a uh or be like, I gotta get my nipples hard or something to send mm, a nude. Yeah. And I'm like, nah. Oh, know. that's what you mean by send at rest. them at rest. Yeah, send I see. So the equip a flaccid breast. A Got flaccid it. nipple. Yes. And Apollonia might have started that for me. Wow. Interesting. This is a great thing about this podcast. We all we find out about ourselves <laughs> during it. Do you remember the first breasts you saw? Were they like a fame uh, on uh, a movie well, breast? My first boner was um Dirty Dancing. Ooh. When the two girls are walking, like crawling toward each other in their underwear. <laughs> oh my God. I remember it. I remember looking at my pants going, something's bad. This is bad. I'm fucked. Mom, help. I thought something was wrong. Yeah. And uh, I was rock hard. Yeah. And I still love like women, like the workout videos and those leotards. Oh, yeah. I love all that oh, shit. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, man. I've definitely looked up some gym themed pornography. Oh, I love the gym stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's nothing nicer than a fat pair of titties popping out of a sports bra. Yes. You're like, yes. what? And I like when the guy rips the spandex <laughs> and he's banging the yoga pants still on with the hole in it. That's hot. <laughs> yeah. And I like the guy's cock. Yeah. That's <laughs> we slowly great. get away from it. And yeah, and I like when he rubs his cock on that rip and then sometimes he's just kind of holding his cock. It's always a great scene too because it's a guy who's like her personal trainer right. and his dick comes out of the bottom. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what the hell? And he's like, oh, jeez. He's wearing such little shorts and his dick is so cartoonishly yeah, big. Yeah, right. And it's like, come on, man, you're a trainer. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, you're, this is like a guy a guy in an office having his dick constantly pop out of his suit. <laughs> right. You're at work right now, man. But let's be honest. If you were at a gym and a guy's dick popped out, you'd probably go, I'd rather suck that than, than work out. <laughs> I'd rather do this to the elliptical. I don't know, man. I'm already at the gym. It's one thing if the guy's cock it was like in my house. You know what I mean? If I've already made it to the gym, uh, I feel like yeah. I want to get the workout. I got you. And I you. don't particularly want to suck his cock either. Okay. But maybe if I was her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's better than lifting. <laughs> I don't know. I like lifting. If he's got a good body, he's nice and fit, got some good <laughs> muscles going. Yeah. Good looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the problem is for you, Otis. He's got to be hot. Right. Well, yeah. You're at, you're at the gym. I mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> Do some fiddling, dude. You think there's some kind of like ritualistic aspect to it where you're like you're kind of paying homage to the man, the ripped man at the gym. <laughs> yeah, there's, absolutely. There's something satisfying <laughs> about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're a part of the culture. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, I still probably wouldn't suck his cock personally, but hey, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you guys want to do, that's cool. That's probably <laughs> porn. You know, you like they won't let kids watch Superman because they'll jump off a building. Yeah. I think we a lot of us watch porn and we're like, oh, we'll just get laid everywhere. We'll, right. we'll have sex yeah, with we'll everybody. Fuck at the gym. Yeah, I'll fuck my teacher. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll yeah, fuck yeah, at the yeah. office. Well, you have fucked your teacher. It's covered in. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Have you fucked anywhere strange? Oh my god! I fucked uh, my girlfriend in the movie theater of during Monsters Inc. <laughs> yes, Monsters Inc. Back row, she got on top. She had a skirt on. We were the only people in the theater. Good times. No condom, raw dog, no, and Monsters Inc. She was Inc. my high school girlfriend, uh, so yeah, it was all wow naughty. on BC. Huh? Was she on birth control? No, no. Oh, were you it... fucking busting inside? I don't know. I think I Did pulled it end out up and in the, jizzed in on the, the popcorn. Cup holder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Went right in the juju beat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. Good for you. Hey, what about you? Any weird spots? I'm not really, to be honest. Um, just. No, I mean. Nothing. No Chuck E. Cheese. No Chuck E. Uh... Movie theater. Movie theater bathroom. I got my dick sucked. Ooh. Ooh, nice um, car, obviously, but sure. nothing, nothing crazy. Really, nothing crazy. I fuck, you know, mostly. And I like to. Lately, I fuck a lot. Of, like in my early twenties, you'd play a lot of when I lived, you know, with a bunch of other dudes, or I lived here and it was bullshit. Mm. I would fuck at a lot of other people's places, but now I have a nice place. People yeah. usually come over here. Right. So I play a lot of home games. I don't really home games know. are better, but I like going there because you can leave. And I that's, like seeing people's apartments. That's always... I mean, I like that, too, from an anthropological yeah. standpoint. Um, but, yeah, leaving is always much better. But I don't know, man. My bed is a good height for how I fuck. Oh, okay, You know, okay. I've got it kind of like... I've got it like... I know I've kind of measured it out for back, perfect back shots height. I can't wait you to know? look at your bed after this yeah. just, to, just to see what we're talking about. Yeah, I'll t- I'll, literally <laughs> when I bought, <laughs> when I bought a bed, when I was researching bed frames, I had my <laughs> It was as a joke, but it actually ended up being helpful. Yeah. I had my boy get on all fours, and I pretended to fuck him in a mattress ah. for so that I could see if the fucking mattress and bed lined up ah, for how I that's fucked. That's great. That, that should be a feature. Yeah. There should be a guy there for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> or at least a blow-up doll yeah. or a sex toy. We were joking. I was like, dude, wouldn't it be funny if you fucking got on all fours so I could make it? And he'd be like, yeah, it'd be fucking stupid. And then he did it, and I was ah. like... Well, I kind of grabbed them. I was like, too high. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fuck. All right. Let's do another question, LD. I wonder if no one stopped you. They're like, we don't want to look homophobic. (laughs) Let them keep going. Excuse me. Me and my husband (laughs) are looking for a bed. (laughs) I thought, what is going on? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was in fucking Saudi Arabia where you can't even see if you can fuck your husband in the ass in an Ikea. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, the worst place, the worst, weirdest place I ever fucked. Probably early January, a couple of years ago, uh, at the Capitol. No. <laughs> <laughs> you getting your dick sucked in Nancy Pelosi's office? Yeah, I'm sure that that yak head guy cleaned up. Yeah, because he was all over. Oh, the place. Oh, did you know a bunch? Somebody oh, had to fuck yeah. him. Yeah, he got a lot of good exposure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would put he was putting a. A horn in each pussy. He's, he's eating a girl's pussy and finger and like horn fucking two other ones. Yeah. While he's doing it, <laughs> a storm is coming. <laughs> it's all part of the plan. Next question, Eldis. Hey, Stav. Hey, Eldis. Hey, guest. Um, I really need help. Okay. I have these two guys in my life who, okay, maybe like three or four. I collect these men hmm. who continue to not take a hint and they won't leave me alone, basically. Okay. And they're not, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to tell them, like, hey, you have to not show up places I am oh. without, like, warning me. Like, I have one kid who just shows up at places I am because he sees that I'm there on my Instagram story. Oh. And I have another guy who I went on two dates with on Bumble in like 2018 who thinks that I need to hang out with him all the time. God damn. Um, it's a lot. It's yeah, a lot. I'm having a bad time. 
please answer this on one of the free shows because I really need help. You're lucky. How do I let down these dudes out. who keep trying to like take advantage of my niceness? But I don't want to be mean, so mean that I have to be like, hey, go fuck yourself, leave me alone. Because they haven't done anything wrong enough to deserve that. Okay, I love the podcast. Thank you. Thank I, you. I relate to this. If I, I can't say no to people. If I was a woman, I would let every nerd fuck my holes <laughs> all day long. Because I can't say no, so I totally get where she's coming from. I'm so lucky I'm a guy. <laughs> right, right. That's um, tough. That is very tough because, <laughs> oh, damn. Showing up is crazy. Crazy. That's stalker shit. Yeah. I mean, that's like, you actually have a pretty good disposition here for what's going on because this is fucked up. Yeah. Um, now, this is the kind of thing where it's like, you should never be in this position, right? Like, uh, but the most effective way to fucking think about this is like, like, this could be an opportunity, because, yeah, maybe it is a thing of being kind of too nice, and also for women, like, scared. Yeah. Because you got this fucking guy that'll just show up. Right. Like, who knows what, if he if she was just like, hey, you're being really fucking weird, like, this is making me uncomfortable. You don't know what these fucking guys are capable of. I like, know. it's scary. Being a woman is fucking scary, dude. That is tough. Um, especially, like, a guy you went on two dates with. And, right. Like, if they don't take the hint. Like, I know one of the worst feelings is getting rejected. Like... I can get rejected by somebody who I haven't fucked or someone who I fucked a hundred times. But what feels bad is getting rejected by somebody you fucked once. Because it's like, they <laughs> yeah. gave you a shot and you blew it. Right. You know what so I mean? you were like, really bad. That's a tough one. Like, there, there's a girl who, like, you know, it wasn't like anything serious was going to happen. But, like, you know, I just, like, that one affected me where she was like, you know, this is cool, but I'm just like, you know, I like you, but I want to be friends. And it was like, if we had never fucked, I'd been like, okay. Or yeah. if we had like gone on a long, had a nice relationship, and we were like, you know, this is great, but we're not going to work out. There was just something so demoralizing about a girl I fucked once being like, you know, cool, and I like you. It's not your personality. <laughs> yeah, I am attracted enough to have fucked you once. I know, but, but, you blew but it. like, like, but you blew it. Yeah. So like, especially for those guys who like, she went on, even if she didn't hook up with him, she went on a couple dates, like, that also feels bad, right? Yeah. Where you're, like, so, these guys are in a fucked up position where they don't understand this is my prop. Like, when that happened to me, I didn't fucking stalk this girl. I was like, I'm sad for two weeks. You gotta internalize you know? it. So, like, you gotta deal with it and you gotta realize, like, oh, okay, that sucks, but on, you know, next thing. So, she's probably you. dealing with some, some of, she's de she says she collects these guys, right? Mm. So, this is a chronic issue for you and I'm not, this is not, blaming you but it's the same way where we all these patterns happen for a reason right like you find people from your life like just on some pop psychology shit i don't know but you should see it you should talk to a therapist about this because i know that i was due because of some patterns in my childhood i was kind of picking up similar people to like who had similar traits to like my shitty, you know, dad or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? You're like, you're of conditioned it to happens. like, to recreate your it's like family shit. Familiarity. And I have friends like, who are like that all the time. You know, we have a friend who just like, he like, he like, he almost, he almost prefers his family suck dick and all his relationships. The longest lasting ones, it doesn't really seem like he likes them. Yeah. He just likes complaining the way he would complain about his family growing up, exactly. right? Exactly. And so it's like, I think there probably is something in your background, psychology, whatever, yes, where, like, where like these people are drawn to you or maybe you're a little people pleasing. That's just, that's the simplest I one, right? I think she kind of likes it a little. Maybe bit. there's I mean, a, these, these guys are scary, but I think there's a she is giving something off. Like, hey, well, don't don't stop following me. Yeah, I don't know whether it's like I don't know what her perception of it is after the first whatever, but she def these people. This is a pattern at least. Yes. Right. At the very least, it's like, and it might not be that she likes it. It might just be that. She, like you said, like you were saying about yourself, she can't say no yeah. or she's indirect about it or whatever. And so I guess now that's all a big, like, you know, pr prologue to say the first step is like trying to be one 
one notch more direct than you have been. Yeah. Right? Like, yes. that's the first. It's just, like, dialing it up slowly and being like, hey, man, like, it's making me a little... You showing up here is honestly making me uncomfortable. We can be fr- You know, it, whatever you want to say. If this is how you feel, we can be friends, but, you know... Well, I'll bump into you places, but you, we, I don't really want to hang out this much, or it's kind of creeping me out that you're looking at my Instagram and then, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Gonna have to put the hammer down a little bit. But yeah, at a certain point, you probably are gonna have to be like, and even the like, let's be friends thing. It's risky. Do you actually mean it's, that? Exactly. If you don't mean it, then be like, hey, I enjoyed our dates, but I think we should, you know, go, you know, see other, see other people or something like that. Or you could take them, you know, and I think that that you have to do some element of that. But yeah. at the same time, and for yourself, so that you get out of this situation. Um, but at the same time, you don't owe these guys anything. You want to just be safe and out of there. So it, I think it's a two-pronged approach of, like, being a little more direct for yourself and to, like, make, make uh, you know, make it clear to these guys. But also, if you have to kind of, like, weasel your way out of this... And be like, hey, I'm working too much, or I have a boyfriend, or whatever. Yeah, you can also lie. lie these, you don't owe off. these guys anything. Yes. But at the same time, you should work on being more direct for yourself. And I think the overall thing here is like, if this is a pattern, if you collect these guys, like you said, figure out why. Ah, Go to therapy, yes. figure out why. Something is um, on you a little bit here because yeah. it, it keeps happening. If there's a pattern, you're doing something, and I'm not defending these no, weirdo, no, no, exactly, exactly. guys. Because but there's a reason. It there's a reason, happening. and For it's sure. so foreign. To and me. it's probably not. And here's the thing: the reason's not your fault, right? No, like, no. The reason is like, I, like my hunch is some weird shit in your fucking childhood, yeah, or that, that just kind of like, like that's probably it. So figure that out, and then, but also like. Be as direct as you can with these guys while you feel safe. I guess is my yeah, is go. my is my advice. Other people and then, around, and then you don't know these. Mo- do some of that progress for yourself, but then ultimately, if you have to just kind of lie and like weasel your way out of it, that's okay this time. And then from now on, there you go. Try and be as direct as possible. Be a little more direct, and more much more importantly, you know, go to therapy and try and figure this specific issue. I always find going to therapy. When you have a specific thing, oh, the best. it's really helpful, actually. Like, yeah, and you know, there's definitely there's definitely people can over pathologize things, and mm-hmm. you know, especially with like the Jonah Hill stuff, where everyone was looking at like um, the language and being yeah, like, this is yeah. therapy language, but not in a therapy. Co-. It's like I think there can be, you can still, it's like there's like a weird therapy backlash after those texts, but I find I do find therapy is very useful. Like I went to therapy and I was like when I was in my 20s, about people-pleasing stuff, especially because my family, I felt all this guilt about... Ironically, the reason, the thing that got me into therapy was I wanted to do comedy, and I felt all this guilt as the firstborn son mm. of an immigrant family that I couldn't do it. Yeah. And then after that, it was like, well, I, I'm a little too people pleasing. And then it's like, okay. And then after that, it was like, I really want to repair my relationship with my brothers. And all that stuff, when I went in with, ex- with specific things... Therapy was incredibly useful for that stuff. Yeah. Now the day to day stuff, if you're just if you don't have anything specific, I think it can your mileage will vary yeah. with how successful it is. But a, a problem like this, where you're like, hey, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I keep getting these fucking losers that won't take no for an answer. Yeah. That I think with a good therapist will be very useful, and and you can really take a look at it. it's pretty fascinating how people will fall back into those traps like the girl with the oh, yeah. alcoholic father oh my keeps God. dating alcoholics it's and fucking, she's like i don't know what my problem is and it's, it's just in the it's wiring insane it's, the cement is dry it's fascinating how you can subconsciously find those things and then two these guys blow my mind because i'm so hyper worried about annoying when i was single i didn't want to annoy a girl and she they'd always be like you don't text enough or right, you're so distant right, right, i'm like right, right. i don't want to bother you or smother yeah. you well that's so the to irony show up somewhere is bananas to the me. irony is you probably attracted women that were clingy because of that yes i did <laughs> you know? you're right like, you're like, right um but so anyway good luck pal you're lucky it's a free one uh, <laughs> we've we've answered your question. I, and we'll I feel I feel like in the meantime too, she should also like imagine you know imagine if one of your girlfriends was telling you you're like she's like going through this. She's having a guy she went on one date with like show up randomly, and you know that just like 
she's like, oh, this guy's kind of weird, but just be like, no, just like think about it more ruthlessly and like block these motherfuckers on Instagram. Oh yeah, totally like, block them. Yeah, true. Or hide hide all your stories from them if they're like looking at your story and Absolutely. like showing up and shit. Like, you know, just be a little more pragmatic about it and just like distance the fuck. I like out of them for yourself because sure. clearly, Holy. clearly, like they don't get it. Um, yeah, yeah uh, no, you're absolutely right. And I think the only reason I was I didn't say like, hey, tell these guys to fuck off, block them, whatever, is because they're showing up around her, yeah. and so it's more of a safety. But in in a world where you're not worried about your safety, you should be like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Leave me alone. Yeah, it just sucks that when you know I don't. I'm guessing that's why she's not being so direct, but. If not, if you're not actually th scared about these guys, then you should t be that direct with them, honestly. Um, but, yeah, no, that's a good point. Obviously, I would definitely block these motherfuckers and hide your stories from them. Oof, that's a tough place to be. I know. You have to hide shit from a loser. And then being that loser where you're, like, looking at a girl's stories. Yeah. And showing up. Showing up. Don't you have anything to do, dude? <laughs> Go do your thing. Go find another lady. Imagine getting so little pussy that a woman being just nice to yes. you merits looking at her stories. And, like, these motherfuckers are so mentally ill. I wonder if she's super hot, maybe. She could be, yeah. She's maybe super hot and nice, which is a hell totally, of a combo. Totally, totally. She sounds she sounds nice. She sounds like pretty boisterous and for like a fun. certain she type, sounds fun. Yes. A super type of loser. They're like, oh, she's like, you know, really cool. She I might I might be able to like fuck her or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and like yeah, yeah, they yeah. keep chipping away, but it's like, you know, this type of guy is like you can't you can't give them like a single thing. You just gotta like put the wall up entirely. Yeah. yeah. No, maybe we can be friends. Like you don't need to get totally, a drink totally. with this guy or whatever. Like no, but you're right. It's a funny combination of loser and persistent. Yes. Because it's yes. like I was a loser. Don't get me wrong. I didn't get pussy until you know my like mid like late to my early twenty like twenty once I graduated college and I lived in that house in Baltimore. I got started getting pussy, but until then, fifteen to fucking oh, yeah. twenty two, no, I was a, I was the biggest, you know, I could, I was too nervous yeah. to get pussy. It's, it was annoying because it was like, you know, I was still like charismatic and like entertaining, but I just couldn't close the deal with a woman because I was nervous. Yeah, and the idea that I would go on a couple dates, a girl would be like, "No thanks," and then I would show up. That's insanity. I did go to one one time a girl. I did it one time where a girl invited me to a Halloween party and I assumed it was like a real like, oh, yeah, we'll hang out. Like we'd been on one awkward date mm -hmm. and it was one of the worst experiences of my life where she just she, I don't know. she I guess she didn't really expect me to go. But yeah. It's like, bitch, then don't fucking invite don't me. Don't invite me. And I'm in these weird places in Baltimore where at the time I didn't know about, you know, these weird warehouse parties. Yeah. Which, you know, three years later, I would be the king of those fucked up scenes. <laughs> but it freaked me out. I was still in college and it's like. All these guys in an abandoned warehouse getting <laughs> fucked up, and I was scared. I had a horrible time. It didn't help that you were just wouldn't stop eating the candy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was nerv ah, nervously eating my Twix. Stomach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was having diarrhea in the one working toilet. And, madam, if I could say one perk of being a lady is you can pull the this guy, I'm scared. If I have a girl like kind of stalking me, I can't be like, I'm scared, and everybody yeah. else will stop her. But yeah, if the yeah, woman's yeah. like, I'm worried about this guy, he's freaking me out, I'm a little nervous, everybody will help you. Sure. Everybody will get on board. Yeah, but, hopefully you know. your friends too. But that's the fucked up thing is you shouldn't have to get to that place. Of course. You of know, course. where it's like, like that's what sucks is like you don't want to make it a fucking like danger thing. No, rather, no. But, but yeah, if push comes to shove, for sure, you should have people. And that's the other thing. Think about if like a friend of ours had this problem. I would also be like, do you want us to fuck that guy up? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's like, what I'm I saying. Mean, if push comes to shove, you also have that the nuclear option. Yeah, I would love to fuck a nerd up for a friend of mine. Yeah, that would be fun. Then you're a hero. That would be fun. That'd be great. <laughs> but a guy like, can't really pull that ripcord. Like, can you beat? Susan yeah, up, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. She's, she this woman I went on me. two dates with kept kept showing <laughs> yeah. up, so I clocked her in the head. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but your honor, she was being clingy. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we're rooting for you, pal. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Hit us with another one, El Dissimo. Uh Hey, Stavi. My name is Jack. So um, my roommate, um, she has this cat. This cat's, you know, it's a cool cat. She's uh, okay. freaking like like 15 years old or some shit. It's ridiculous. But she's still like kind of got it mentally. 
But okay. as far as like physically, she's like fucking like, you know, running up and down the stairs because she's constipated and then like <laughs> shitting on the stairs. Oh, no. And then, you know, like, you know, sometimes pissing on the carpet too. Ugh. It's not like, you know, it, it's fucking annoying, but yeah. it's, it's, I guess, not the worst thing in the world because, you know, it's still like a cute cat, I guess. But, Sounds pretty bad. <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess um, this is nothing. to get to the point, um, I think this cat is like, you know, really old and kind of like in a lot of pain. And at okay. some point, like, how do I have the conversation with her that maybe it needs to be put down? <laughs> um, and then uh, I guess it's also worth mentioning my roommate's like bipolar. Oh, um, boy. So I can't, you know, she's on medication most of the time. Most. But she did just lose her meds today. Lose? Um, so I obviously like can't approach that situation now. But what? Um, yeah, let me know what you think. <laughs> Bye. Well, if she's off her meds, just tell her the cat. You caught the cat trying to steal her stuff. Yeah. She's off her meds. Tell her the cat is Satan. Yeah. And if if he doesn't kill it, this is the it'll... worst problem in this guy's life. Some other motherfucker, some marine's like, I bought a house, bitch. <laughs> I bought an engagement ring. You got a bad cat? Who gives a fuck? It's not even your cat. Well, pal, I mean, it's just so funny to be living with this kind of like minor, these kinds of like minor stacked up inconveniences yeah you have a you already have like kind of an unstable roommate whose cat is kind of annoying i mean cat shit on your stairs okay is okay that's constant bad. shitting that's bad that's the th if it was just kind of like an in pain cat who didn't shit everywhere i'd be like all right man who cares feed it some catnip like yeah sneak it some fucking pills do whatever right. <laughs> but like how do you have the conversation with your bipolar roommate? There might be bigger fish to fry with your bipolar roommate. Yeah, I'm more worried about the... Now that she's off his her off her meds. Right. I'm not worried about the cat. I'm worried about her with the knife behind yeah, me. Yeah. Or her in a bad mood or whatever. Yeah, I mean... You're not... You, yeah, clearly, this. I guess your roommate doesn't clean up after the cat. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, maybe. That's pretty gross. There's everywhere. Uh, I don't know about having the co conversation about putting the cat down is kind of weird. That's weird. What do you care? Would you tell Would you tell your roommate that they have to kill their cat? No. And it doesn't it feel like the like again. I would, I would broach not it. when we were roommates, but just some guy. I would broach it because fifteen is pretty old for a cat. <laughs> yeah, and if they're like. You know, it sounds like this cat like needs a di needs diapers, which is like yeah. dogs wear diapers and shit when they get like old and senile. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. If it's like shitting and pissing constantly, and you know she's bipolar, she lost her meds. I'm gonna go ahead and say she's not cleaning up the shit every <laughs> single time. Like this guy's yeah, probably got to do point. some scrubbing. So yeah, I think you can be like, hey, this cat is like fucking up our house. I know you love it, but it's also in in like pain and it's living a miserable life. Like. You know, it would be cool. It's to just, just time to put it down. Yeah, I think you could. I think you could broach that. But people love their fucking. They pets, love their dude. cat. You know, people love their. I pets. have a cat. I love this fucking thing. I yeah. cuddle with it. I yeah. play with it. Yeah. I love it. I fuck it. But yeah. this this guy, what he should do is have people over and let them say it. Mm. You know, like wow, this cat is really got to go. Like this is yeah. bad. This is you're 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 making it sadder. Like yeah, he would be yeah, happier yeah. if he was dead. Like get them to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just it's such an interesting position because you're not close enough to a person to have this conversation. You just happen to be roommates. Oh, they're not right? buds. Like I don't. I mean, I don't. It doesn't. I don't know if they are. If you guys are close. Then you can have the conversation. Mm -hmm. But if you're not, then you essentially have a business partnership. Yeah, that's and, tough. You know, it's like, if anything, this is a reason for you to move out. <laughs> like, yes. like off, off meds, oh, fucked up old cat. Then think about this. You think this lady who just went off her meds and is on them some of the time, you think she's going to take her cat dying well? Ooh, <laughs> like you think true. you think she's gonna just not be fucking we like sad as fuck and true. weird after it? I don't know, man. Yeah. What if what if he tried like uh hey, this cat's making a mess constantly. Do you think maybe it's at the point that it like stays in your room when you're not home or something for starters? Just like contain it and m like make it so that they have to deal with it. And that's so you're not seeing like shit and piss. 
It's it's hard. It it is hard. This is fucked up. Yeah. Because when you're at when you like are outside of it, it's like so plain that the cat needs to be put down. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, You can't say that to someone, especially if they're like just a roommate that you're not that close with. Totally. Whatever. Um, Yeah, dude. Like I would say it to you, no problem. Yeah. (laughs) I would be like, I would kill your cat. Actually, I would be like, I wouldn't kill it, but I would, I would put out obstacles for it. Yeah. That, you know, I'd leave the window open. Yeah, bring a, little, a dog over. I'd put a little, yeah, yeah, I'd put a little fucking, uh, like, some some tuna right at the edge of the balcony. Yes. <laughs> right hanging off the edge. Just like, go ahead. Grab it, buddy. Well, I was going to say that, like, maybe he does need to play God. Because ultimate, <laughs> ultimately, ultimately, what does he give a fuck about this roommate, yeah. really? Or this fucking <laughs> decrepit old cat. So, you know, maybe you got to intervene. And, you know, you're doing a good thing for the cat. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The angel of death. Put you, it out of its misery. Yeah, you let some fucking crazy ass cat outside, like kill it instantly or something. <laughs> no, as don't put it, it outside. <laughs> leave, <laughs> leave a door open. Leave a window open. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a little poison. Poison would be a nice. A little poison in the food bowl. That might not be a bad. <laughs> that's not move. bad. Yeah. Um, Does it have any other health problems that it's you know that you would buy it dying off of? The curveball is the bipolar. That right, changes everything. Right, if it wasn't, right. if the guy wasn't bipolar, I feel like you could do the whole talk. Hey, it's, it's old. It's shitting everywhere. It's well, not bipolar fun. and bipolar, but m- just lost her meds is really the curveball. Yeah, bipolar yeah. on meds, it's whatever. They take right. their meds. Who gives a fuck? Right. But if you're just if you're freshly off meds, you want to kill her cat now? Well, I don't know, brother. Yeah, I would. How how fucked up is your? Is it a nice apartment? Like, can you get a different place? To me, this is just like, this is the tough thing because she's right on the edge of it being too annoying to live through. Mm-hmm. But I mean, when I was when I was broke, I would put up with this for sure. Oh, of course, yeah, of course. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just be nothing. Just another fact of life. Yeah, I guess it really becomes a problem if she's not picking up after the cat. That's what it is. That would piss me off. I mean, it's not good for your whole place to smell like cat piss, but no. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. You're pretty much fucked here. Just poison it. Who gives yeah, a fuck? Kill the cat. Yeah, kill the cat. Shoot it in the back of the You'll head. You'll be doing it a favor, doing yourself a favor. There you go. And you're not going to live there forever. Yeah, yeah. Find a different place. One more, Marky. You got let's time? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Hit us with a nice one, Eldis. I feel like I've I've flubbed that one. So I want to give me a real juicy. No, one. I know I didn't have. We didn't have much for him. It's a fucking okay. weird uh, problem. Okay, if I don't get this one right, I'm not calling back. Um, hello, Stav. Uh, I was dating a girl that I met at the end of 2020 for a few months, I think like three or four months. Um, it was fine. I liked her a lot. She liked me towards the end. It was kind of said that she was going through, um, a phase of, you know, having just gotten out of a long relationship. I had also, Mm. and so she didn't want to like be my girlfriend in that specific case which was fine i appreciated her honesty and i was like cool Sounds like I, you know good luck mm. um and we stayed in touch to you know a moderate degree we once we kind of like that was said we never had any like physical contact really again but um you know we'd go out to lunch every once in a while and things like that what? um so that was what? like two years ago last night <clears throat> i noticed that she had just uh, she's in the final stages of graduating from this writing course, um, getting her MFA in writing. From and middle school. Her thesis <laughs> program, or whatever, her thesis for the program <laughs> is to publish. And she wrote a book. And so I was reading excerpts from the oh. book, kind of mostly just looking for my own name. And uh, the premise of her book is that she's a. My like life, fucking nothing but losers. <laughs> and the premise of well, uh, yeah, that, let's get a couple out before we let him say what it actually is. <laughs> my premise, my pre- the premise of the book, my life, lying to losers about getting out of a relationship, <laughs> stealing, sucking someone got sucking someone off eight times and stealing their credit card information, and then telling them <laughs> I just got out of an engagement. <laughs> uh, do you have anything, Mark, or should we play it? Uh, the premise oh, of the I'm, book I'm, is I'm uh, well, it's uh, <laughs> it's my version of Anne Frank, except yeah. I can't get away from this fucking asshole. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the Nazis. Yeah. It's the Stewie. It's some guy off Hinge. Yeah, with little round glasses and a denim jacket. If I had to guess. <laughs> um, all right, let's see what it actually. Let's see what the premise actually is. 
she's a like a habitual chronic liar. Oh. And I couldn't figure out if it, it was oh. real or if this was a fictitious premise. Oh boy. With some mix of the two. But there were many, many, many things that she had said to me that in this book were kind of like confessed to be out and out lies. And some <laughs> kind of like weirdly personal what a dumb and kind bitch. of important things. And so I messaged her and I, you know, I was like, oh. congrats on having this out messaged in the world. Uh, I am curious, you know, what, what did you say to me that wasn't true? Because there was a couple things that, that we kind of bonded on in terms of shared life oh, experience dude. that was then said to be not true in this book. And uh, never read an she kind of wouldn't answer. She referred to it as a big game. I would blah, read blah, my blah, wife's blah. book. <laughs> now, like, I have no interest in us, her and I being together, um, but well, I cares. did value how that relationship kind of went. I was very proud of not just myself, but of her for how, you know, how we handled things and how Pause I was this. under the impression that we were being very honest, which is why. Shut the uh, fuck yeah, up. I mean, you got to break dude. up with this guy. I get it now. What are you talking? <laughs> you were proud of yourself and her? Oh, God. Come on, dude. What do you mean you were proud of her for breaking up with you? I know. Dude, Oof. come on. Oh, I'm please. sorry. Finish, finish this. Sorry. <laughs> I, this guy's going to hear like, this. What happened in such a nice way. Like, back to um, I don't know why I'm thinking it personally, <laughs> and I don't know why I can't stop thinking about it, but um, I don't really have... I Also, around that time, I moved to a new city, which is where I live now, and most of my friends here are either girls or gay guys, so I, I don't really have so too many being a bitch? <laughs> uh, straight guy opinions in terms of... Uh, <laughs> it just cut off because you wouldn't shut the fuck yeah. up. Like, yeah. He's just butthurt to the maximum about yeah. this shit. Wow. Well, I mean, okay. the, the sad part is that she thought he was worthy of writing a book about. You know, <laughs> This is not well, good he, stuff. He's not even in the book, right? The, she just wrote about how she lies all the time, right? I'm assuming she adapted like parts of their actual relationship for this book. That's what and, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, but maybe, right. maybe it's not about him. Maybe it's about how she was like. But isn't that even something. worse for him? Here's, the, here's what's going on. This guy thought he had a special relationship that was doomed due to time, right? Mm. This guy thought, what a connection if only we hadn't been both out of relationships. It, Which, yeah. by the way, that wasn't a problem for him. No. He <laughs> pretends it is now that right, she said it. Right. But he would have dated her in a fucking heartbeat. Totally. So he has this narrative crafted about this. And look... I, I was shitting on him, but I know what he means about being proud of like, like a relationship ending civilly, right? There is something to you feel like when, because I, I felt that way after, like I really gave my last relationship a go, right? Because my whole life I've been scared of commitment. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to do it. I would always fuck up if a relationship was good. I would fuck it up, and then I felt even though that relationship ended and it, it didn't end particularly well. But like it didn't end bad, like horrible or anything. But even though it wasn't ultimately successful, I was proud. I was like, you know what? I gave it a shot. Mm -hmm. I didn't like, I you know, we worked through some stuff. Yeah. I got closer to being like, you know, being a bet like somebody. I got closer to getting my relationship shit together by actually trying. So yeah. as much as we shit on him, that's I get where he's coming from. So basically, though, his narrative of this relationship has been completely shattered uh -huh. and not only that for some dumb bitch with an mfa like that's the other thing no one's gonna read this nobody no one's gonna read her fucking thing about being a, a fucking lying cunt yeah it's her right. thesis <laughs> it's her fucking mfa yeah. thesis like and it's about how she's a fucking piece of shit yeah like you know what i mean it's like and what so, did you expect? And he He's went immediately. First of all, it's not even published. He saw it like right. what you you clearly are lying to yourself a little bit here, pal. Yeah. You're like, and, why are you looking? And did you think she was gonna blow you in the book and glorify you? Maybe, no. Maybe I, he did though. I think he did, but it's like, what are you crazy? That's not a good book. <laughs> I met this guy. He was great. We had a great ending to our relationship. No, it's gotta be juicy. It's 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 a book. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, no, that, that's what's fucked up about this is like, it just completely, he completely, it shattered his shit. He was expecting that. He was expecting like, yes. if anything, like a passage, even a short passage about, oh, what a doomed but beautiful relationship. <laughs> like he, that's what he wanted. He wanted like a couple pages about, you know, something. Oh yeah. And so look, dude, 
what I don't even know what the question is here. <laughs> you can't. You have to be honest with yourself. That hurt your feelings. And yeah, you dated kind of a sociopath who was you who. Not only was your relate was your moment not special, but you were being mined for some of the worst literature of all time. <laughs> there you go. And that's tough. I mean, that's a big L to swallow. Big L, but at least you're in a book. At least you yeah. made it. You yeah. have a credit yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. You have something. Somebody wrote about you. So, just here's the reality: is you never really dealt with this dealt with this breakup. Instead, you crafted a narrative to help you get through it, and now you're sort of re getting broken up with. Yes. He's kind of going through the pain of a breakup all over again because um, he misread the first one so bad. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah. So treat this like a breakup. It'll be easier than the first breakup, but you'll be kind of sad. Your real Someone kind of fucked your reality up, and that's it's, it. Take it as a wake-up call, though. You're not always right. You build these narratives up in your head, and this guy needed a book. Yeah, to yeah. to uh, you know see the truth almost yeah, yeah. so I mean it's a tough one don't get us wrong we it's feel tough. we feel for you but you can't be reading these books and that's another thing you can't it's not going to be good no no oh yeah I mean I'm you know if an ex makes anything about you you don't want you know what I mean like yeah yeah and even when I like when I write jokes about relationships whatever I do try and think about the person to of some course. degree of course yeah you don't want to hurt anybody um but but it, but I also recognize as someone who like look. This is my fucking job. I'm gonna right. talk about this stuff. You sure. know, it's like it, it's like I know it's embarrassing. That's the embarrassing part about dating comedians. It's not really being with them. It's that like you date a musician, you might get a song written about you. Yeah, you date a, you date a comedian, you get a uh, joke about eating pussy poorly written about you, or it's like your pussy they're talking about. Yeah, but you're like you're the loser in the joke. Yeah, I hey, believe me, I'm the loser in these jokes. Yeah, but, she had a great pussy. Yeah, <laughs> but even if this guy confronted the woman, she'd be like, "You read that." Yeah, you I know? know that's true. You are the you are doing a loser behavior here. Yeah, by really giving a fuck so much, like you know this shit. You weren't walking. At a book fair. Ah, you just see, perusing. You're like, hey, what the hell? This yeah. is Kathleen's book. Right. And you picked it up and you're like, hey, that's... You just... What the hell? No. You saw probably an Instagram story. Yeah, yeah. Googled, you know, fucking Columbia.edu backslash Kathleen underscore Turner the underscore thesis. Downloaded the PDF. Control F for your name. Yeah. You're a fucking loser. Wow. Like, that's loser behavior. Have you done this? No. You nailed that. No, but I mean, no, that was no. A great I, procedure. I haven't done it, but that's that's probably what this no, fucking course, guy did. Course. You know what I mean? Like, and so that's the. You also have to just be honest with yourself. This fucked you up. You're basically dealing with the hurt of a breakup all over mm -hmm. again, and that's okay. But, you know, it sucks. And we're with you. It sucks. Um, but he, he's probably leaving out the part about the paragraph he read in it where she was like, and by the way, his dick was trash. That was <laughs> yeah. the most trash yeah, dick I ever probably. had. And I lied to him about that <laughs> endlessly. Uh, <laughs> the trash dick chapter. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah, dude. So sorry. Um, sorry, but you know, you'll bounce back, baby. And, and, um, her lying doesn't actually, you should still be proud of yourself about how that relationship ended. You can't worry about the other person being a sociopath, right? And here, this is also another lesson of, yeah, don't don't be reading. Don't you don't need new information. No, no. You weren't interested in dating this woman again, right? Is that's what you claim anyway? And you were perfectly happy before you read that. Sometimes it's that Pandora's box thing. If you had never looked the, at that thesis, the curiosity was killing. You'd him. be fine. I you'd know. be happier today, but he living thought, a lie. He thought it was going to be positive. This guy yeah, is a little yeah. up his own ass. Yeah. I think a little delusional. <laughs> I think he thought this is going to be a glowing review, yeah, yeah. and he got trashed. Oh, Trash man. dick. Sorry, pal. And sorry, sorry to really compound it. We really have just been trashing you now. I know. I feel bad. He wrote in. I, I feel to. bad too. But whatever. Fuck him. Well, hey, he's probably like, ooh, yeah. I'm in Stavros's pot. I have to. Live Listen, that's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm He's sure he'll be supporting me fully. Yeah, yeah. He fast-forwarded to the end. He waited for his name, just like the book. Control F. Control F. All right. We'll be bleeping that, but you, you can guess what he said, folks. Soup to nuts on the big end. Yeah. 
go watch it. Go see him live. Come see us live. Stavi.biz. We've got the tour kicking off in London, and then we're Ooh, all over the place. Hell we're yeah. Trying to sell some tickets in Cleveland, Ohio. The rest of the tour is selling really nice. Um, but yeah, come see us. Thank you, Mark, for doing the show, man. Thank you. So I got fun. a guy outside waiting. <laughs> no Wait, yeah. somebody been in the car? No, he's going to open the show, and oh, I told okay, him to meet okay. me here at, uh, okay. a little while ago. Nice. He's, he's good. Oh, he can come inside. Um, all, all right. right. Uh, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you for having me.